Bee Free is located in southern Belize at the foothills of the Maya Mountains. It's a very remote location. It's a private protected area and it's located about six miles off the highway. And it's also located at the gateway to the Bladen Nature Reserve, which is one of the key biodiversity core areas within the Maya Mountains. We established Bee Free to assist the government in developing a management program for the Blade Nature Reserve and the surrounding protected areas. I was exploring the area to look for property near the Blade Nature Reserve, and Old Chiclero, who was my guide, told me that there was wild cacao trees in the area. It probably wasn't until the second or third year of living here, maybe in the mid to late 90s, that we started stumbling upon these wild cacao trees. Somewhere around 2005, uh, some of my staff said, Jake, why don't you plant some of these seeds from these wild trees? Even though my background's not agriculture or farming at all, we just like to do things here and experiment. We started gathering pods from these wild trees, cracking them open, putting seeds in some nursery bags. And then after a few months, we found a patch of forest and we cut little trails and planted the trees about every 10 feet apart and then walked away. Didn't really think anything about it for probably three or four years until some other staff of mine said, hey, you've got some cacao over there in that forest. And I said, oh my God, that's right. I recognized that we had planted thousands of trees and I'd forgotten. Maybe we should start taking care of them. I started learning more, a lot more about cacao and chocolate. And I recognized that maybe the type of cacao that we had was a little unusual. Yeah, it was wild but there's a lot of wild things around here. So I didn't really give it that much thought. But the more I learned about chocolate and cacao, I started hearing about this type of cacao that grows in Latin America called criollo. I started looking at our pods more closely and started cutting the beans open and noticed every single one of them was white. I guess that's a sign that maybe it's criollo. Usually cacao is dark purple, um, but the beans that we have are all white. So I started researching a little bit into Criollo and I realized, oh, well, Criollo is pretty rare. Most of it has been cut down or it's been lost to disease. It's just not what's commonly grown. Once I determined that maybe we have a type of Criollo here, started looking around and learning and heard about this organization called the Heirloom Cacao Preservation Fund. What is HCP? Probably we have to start with why before we get to what. Why it was started was because cacao with flavor is an endangered species. It's a kind of a crop, you can't do factory farming, but along came a variety that you could. It's flavorless and it's beginning to dominate the marketplace. As a result of that, we started HCP so that we're in a position to set a goal to preserve for this generation and future generations fine flavored cacao. And that's not me roaring behind you, that's monkeys talking to us. So we collected about eight or 10 kilograms of wild beans. We did a small batch micro-fermentation. It worked, I don't know how, because we didn't really know what we were doing. But we, you know, we, we, we investigated a little bit, we had some idea. And we sent off this batch of beans to, to HCP. They come in blind, we designate them, and then it goes to Qatar chocolate. We get a sample, we do, it's a blind sample, so we don't know, you know, where it comes from. We cut it, and then we kind of decide on the roast by the, what the cut looks like. We winnow it and, you know, take the shell off and try and get a lot of the shell off by hand. And then we uh, grind it in like a Cocoa Town type of melanger and, you know, make, make the chocolate. Then we send it out to everybody on the tasting panel and uh, everybody, it's blind, nobody knows what the sample is. Then we taste. What they're deciding is flavor. It's all based on flavor. They're experts, they've got a total of 240 years of doing this. They have a whole criteria they go through. They get on conference calls, they taste, and then they rate it. And if it gets a certain high enough rating, it's designated heirloom. Eventually we heard that the, the beans we sent in were indicative of a heirloom fine flavor cacao. And so they sent down someone to collect leaf samples and seeds for genetic analysis. The results came back and said, oh, you have a 100% pure criollo. 
Congratulations. We've probably tested bean submissions close to 100 now, and there are only two that are pure, pure variety. Uh, one from Bolivia and the one at Be Free. It's a pure criollo. So to be a pure variety and a white bean puts it in a league of its own. I guess at that point's when I recognized we really do have something special here. I started learning more about HCP, and their mission is to identify and preserve heirloom fine flavor cacaos for the preservation of biodiversity and helping farming communities. I love that mission. HCP engaged Be Free and asked if we would like to participate in a project where they would help fund and support, technically and otherwise, a nursery to help us propagate this HCP designated heirloom cacao. So the projects at Be Free is one, the nursery project, trying to get the trees and trying to increase the yield within the nursery. The second project at Be Free is to try, once they're out of the nursery and into the growing area, we want to make sure that we can increase the yield and we can increase the preservation opportunities. We probably wouldn't have done it without them. Or if we had, it wouldn't have been as well planned and run without their support. Part of the farm at Be Free is not this wild criollo. Some of the farm are seeds we've brought in from other farms around Belize, so we have a mosaic of different types, and we collected seeds from those for our, our seed stock. The goal of the nursery is to help plan out the first in a series of stages of developing farms here. There are small areas within Be Free that are somewhat degraded due to probably farming that may have occurred decades and decades ago, or possibly storms, or even natural fire, we're not sure. But there's just little patches that we thought would be good areas that we could experiment with a reforestation project. So the nursery is providing the seedlings for our farm development. This year we have 7,500 trees that we're hoping to plant out in the coming months. Our goal is to have about 30,000 trees, about 100 acres of Criollo growing here. So our hope is to restore degraded areas of bee free, small patches with Criollo as the primary understory tree, but we'll also be planting the whole variety of trees in order to grow that forest back. It's an experiment. This cacao industry is a big deal. $130 billion a year. I'm starting to learn a lot more about it, and I'm also thinking, we've got a variety of cacao that people want. I know it's rare. It's growing under the forest here naturally, under shade. There's wildlife all around. There's jaguars walking through. There's harp eagles flying around. There's 350 species of birds. Something sparked, and I was thinking, hmm, maybe this particular type of cacao would incentivize tropical forest restoration or conservation because it needs to grow in the canopy. It's its natural ecosystem, its natural habitat. Probably doesn't grow well in the sun. We're trying to investigate the potential to regenerate forest with cacao, in this particular, this shade-loving criollo, as part of that restoration, as part of that agroforestry system, to provide economic and environmental benefits, and social benefits as well. Because if we can figure out how to develop this system, and if Criollo has strong economic potential, which we believe it probably does, then we can export that technology to local farmers, which will incentivize them to grow this variety of cacao and to regenerate forests in the, in the farming communities that are around here, particularly the buffer zones around these protected areas. That ultimately is part of our goal, so I'm hopeful for the future, I'm, I am. I think usually it takes things to go really down before they turn around and come back up. But I bet my grandchildren will probably be living in, in a better place.